Welcome back to Robin, Robin and Sarah back. playing through When the Night Comes. As y'all may know, if you've been keep, keeping up with any information on When the Night Comes, as they recently had an update in which they made some of the scenes more suggestive, is my understanding, and also they uh, enhanced Finn's titty and other things. They give Finn's titty an upgrade yes, and his arm. Here's the thing is that we aren't playing that version. And his neck. Uh, no. This, I was wondering what our consensus was on that. Yes, because we would have to go through and re-record everything. But and we're not doing also, that. Which we could potentially do for the next route. But also, I figure not yes. doing that gives anyone watching this a... Um, Fusion. Not a confusion, but um, we're trying to Gives influence you to actually buy the game. It's yeah, so that $5. you can see the new boob, the new booby. It's literally upgrade. five dollars. This game is worth a lot more than five dollars, just like emotionally. So you should. Buy I also, it. I also <laughs> emotionally. I also noticed in the patch notes it says that they fixed some typos, and I believe that that was my influence. It was not your influence because I'm I know it wasn't. That have not watched this. I know it wasn't, but I'm going to believe that for my own sake. And also, okay. they recently released a new mini story that I'm really excited to play after we finish all of this because we have to finish this before I can play it. Okay. But yeah. When we last left off, Sarah had a big decision had a big in front decision of her to make about whose path we were going to complete first, and I do not know the answer to this. And it's been like a month since we recorded, but Sarah I... knows whose whose path and has known since like the night of and has refused okay. to tell me because she wanted to tell me on recording. I didn't know the night of. I had I had like a the next real day. struggle in, ahead of me and I asked other people what I should do and I actually got multiple votes for um, Omen. <laughs> but That's because everyone here has taste. Everyone here has taste. And but I'm not going with Omen. Sorry to Abigail who told me to date Omen. Abigail just started the 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 uh, festival episode so oh, she really I know love that Abigail's happening. watching this. I know. Thank you for your support, Abigail. She's doing it while she's like drawing, so I promised her I would scream every time there was art, so she could fl switch over and look at the art. But um, <laughs> maybe I told terrible. her that was gonna happen anyway. But I just, I have to uh, go with my heart. I, can you see my mouse I over here? I can see your mouse. And I feel like I'm doing you a betrayal because I know how you feel. <laughs> I know who you're picking now about <laughs> the characters in this game. But I just have I just I know what I want <gasps> wait we're going with August yeah <laughs> was, was, were you being joking with me no I loved August <laughs> I know I feel like I'm stealing them from what? you but no, I can't. I'm can you can you hear that I'm very excited I can tell I can tell I saw that we have fight options now which isn't we do we ideal have fight options now um, are we fighting the I'm love not interest? saying anything but look at this cool oh, art like look that's at those very eyes cool up there. those eyes look awesome i'm All right, so I guess we excited gotta... i was convinced that i was gonna have to do alcar's voice <laughs> for the rest of the playthrough and i felt the biggest pit in my stomach <laughs> no i feel like i was i'm stealing your 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 date mate from we you can like i'm share stealing. them we can they're share worth them. it they don't have polyamorous route that's okay this is the polyamorous route. Okay. The polyamorous route is us playing August's route. I love <laughs> the poly him so much. Okay. Anyway, I'm just saying okay, that okay. August is the love of my life and they're a fictional character. I just feel like I feel like August won me over over Alcar. I love that they did because they're I, amazing. They did, and they are, and I also feel bad. Also, non-binary pride. Like I have to support you picking August. Do not feel bad. Hey. Like I'm here. But like I was watching all the episodes back like in the in between time and i was like man alcar is pretty good though like i remember <laughs> why i felt that way but whatever uh, he, he had a bad date wrong, so. like alcar gets the best jokes we do make the best jokes about alcar we do have good alcar jokes. um that's about the only good jokes we have but august is just so likable okay all right do you want to do you want to do okay do the sorry let's now? do it let's do it the cold winter wind whips against my skin as i run as fast as i can sinking deeper into the ominous woodland that surrounds lunaris I'm hot on Piper's heels, and she's determined, focused, as am I. There's nothing like the hunt, the way my instincts drive every feeling, the way my every thought is hyper-focused, fixated on winning and only winning. I can think of nothing else but finding the source of the distress, a terrible sense of dread swirling deep in my gut. Ooh, this going fun. The woods are teeming with every hunter and enforcer Lunaris has to offer, each and every one of us silently hoping that this isn't what we think it Pause. is. Pause, can you hear the music? No. 
Is it cool? Oh, it's great. I'm just, I wish you could hear the music. I'll watch it back. That this isn't the fifth victim that we've all been expecting. Another of our comrades targeted and slain so brutally and without an apparent motive. Killed simply for doing their job, protecting humankind. I got an email and I'm gonna ignore it. You should ignore my feet. it. Also, my um, real quick, if anyone's hearing a difference in my voice, this is because Sarah convinced me to move over from- To a microphone. To an actual microphone from my <laughs> Apple earbuds. Headphones. Um, and now we won't have to listen to the of it going on your shirt. This is the fancy <laughs> mic that I have literally had for years that I only pulled out because <laughs> just Sarah won't whip asked it out. very nicely. Uh, <laughs> okay, we are indeed recording. We're good. What if we weren't? Oh God. My feet pound the frost crisp grass, tall trees with gnarled branches that curl inward like talons, almost naked from winter's grasp looming high above us. I spot eyes glowing in the darkness, but quickly realize they're carved messily into the rickety tree trunks. They glow ominously, and as another gust of wind blows, I swear I see them blink. You mind your own business. <laughs> I'm doing my job. I make a mental note to remind myself to return to investigate, though I'm sure they're nothing new. Not in a town like this. <laughs> Piper skids to a stop, her fingers diligently hovering just above the handle of each of her daggers that sits safely in the holster at her back. I love that she dual wields daggers. <laughs> Look at her. She looks great. Did you hear that? That's our wife. That's your line. I'm sorry. Oh, well. That's okay. A quiet but obvious whisper echoes among the trees. A pained groan from something unquestionably inhuman. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. A creature. I did. Our fingers twitch, so do mine. Eyes narrowed, every sense razor sharp and zoned in on that singular point. It feels young, inexperienced. <laughs> oh, whatever. It feels whatever. young, inexperienced. <laughs> inexperienced. I'm going inexperienced. inexperienced. It doesn't have any experience. It's oh no, it's a baby! Okay. Oh god, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it feels young, inexperienced. It's beneath our skill skill level. Beneath us. Ooh. She says it with such a confidence, but her guard is still firmly up. It's been a month. I'm just gonna keep trying voices until I get something that works. I like it. The duo of wide-eyed hunter-sergeants that had been ordered to tail us arrive at our side, their cheeks rosy. Major? Uh, Piper opens her mouth to respond, but she pauses, looking at me. You are the highest rank here, mm -hmm. General Robin. Do we move on and let these two handle it, or do you fancy working out some tension? Woo, woo, woo. Uh, what do I fancy? What do you I fancy? Oh, it's this kind of fight. Oh, fight, 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 fight. I could always do with working out a little tension. I knew she'd smile. That's what I was hoping you'd say. I haven't had a good fight in what feels like forever. <laughs> I turn to address the sergeants. Continue heading for the rendezvous point. If you encounter General Willenheim, tell them we're on our way. They nodded a little too eagerly and run onward. The hairs on the back of my neck rise the second they're out of sight. My body gearing up for a fight. Adrenaline coursing generously through my veins. Ooh, I like that. Generously coursing through your veins. I close my eyes and clear my mind. I can hear the steady, assured thrum of Piper's heartbeat, the quiet rustle of the grass, the leaves rustling in the trees. Then, I feel it. A vampire, a youngling. Her aura is frantic and skittish. She's only just awoken. She's hungry and scared. She's trying to hide. Aww. Whoa. Whoa. What was that? What was what? You're like all of a sudden I just heard like <laughs> like something was on fire. <laughs> Do you hear Kish now? Yeah, but not nearly as loud. I don't know, that scared me. Anyway, huh. I smile. I wonder if it's not coming through it should be coming through my good mic. We're out quite far. I always used to find younglings in this area. She's just a baby. She can likely sense that there's a clan here. She th she's either seeking guidance or an easy meal. Guidance, guidance. It's too dangerous to let her live. She's quite clearly unstable. No, guidance. Then we'll have to kill her. No! The Bechtel test! The youngling finally emerges from the tree line. Her vivid crimson iris is surrounded by a blackened... You've already passed me. 
Bechdel test. You and Piper have talked. I know, but the the more Bechdel test. The more Bechdel test. Yeah, it's the second part. Her eyes flicker widely as she lumbers towards us, unfocused and impossibly unsteady on her feet. Please tell me she has art. This should be easy. She does not have art. She's clearly deprived of blood, dark, vining veins surrounding her wild eyes, creeping down her pale cheeks. Oh. I see that she wears no shoes, her feet black with mud, and her clothing is torn and saturated with blood, most of it likely her own. Her death was obviously not a merciful one. She's quite clearly been left to navigate her rebirth by herself, and this never ends well. That's not nice. Her lips curl menacingly to reveal sharp fangs that she's still getting used to, and she lunges at us without hesitation. Uh, 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 If you hit the wrong uh, one, you die. Do I? I'm kidding. I want to block. That sounds cool. I never do that in video games. I block her attack. With <laughs> I block her attack this without a second thought. This game lets you live out your fantasies, like having the reflexes actually block an attack. Of remembering which button blocks. Yeah. I block her attack without a second thought, sending her staggering. I know without a doubt that she doesn't stand a chance. Not against me, not against Piper, and certainly not against us together. The youngling screeches, a deafening sound that leaves my eardrums crackling, but we relent. She tries again, shrieking as she attempts to attach herself to Piper's neck, fangs bared. Piper glances at me with a certain ferocity burning in her gaze, our twin instincts sizzling, itching for a kill. Not today, sweetheart. Piper kicks her square in the chest, sending her hurtling towards me. After a swift elbow to the face, which leaves her stunned, I grabbed her about the waist and tackle her to the forest floor. I seat myself upon her back, Piper quickly assisting and holding her arms where she tries to claw me. The youngling thrashes and screams as I forcibly grab her hair, yanking her head back. Oh, we're gonna slit her throat or something. Piper stares her down, shaking her head. She's gone. Put her out of her misery. Oh, I don't want to. We work in tandem to remove her head clean from her body. Woo! It's the only way, however violent it may be. I feel warmth spray against my skin, wet, the unmistakable smell of copper. The visceral sound of tearing flesh and breaking bone fills the clearing. Oh boy. Then she turns to nothingness beneath us, an unrecognizable pile of blood and viscera, and yet another, another human life has been stolen and twisted into something evil. Oh! That was fun. <laughs> okay, Piper. I brush the dirt from my knee, from my knees and take a deep breath, watching Piper clean off her bloody daggers on the grass. We should really get going. She turns to face me, and I spot that her face is covered in a dark splattering of crimson. Yep. Uh, I mean, she doesn't know we picked the August route. Well, the thing is, we haven't hit the that technically I know. the official picking. I know. Okay. I take a tentative step forward, and her eyes quickly flick to my face, curio curiosity shining in bright blue, her adrenaline still spiked. You have a little something... I do? Yes, you have blood on your face. I nod, stepping closer again, unable to stifle the smile that threatens to curl up my lips as she stares me down. Right... here. I touch the tip of her nose, then each of her cheeks. May I? She arches a brow at me, her eyes are sparkling wickedly. You may. <laughs> she tilts her head and waits expectantly, a hand resting on her cocked hip. I reach out and brush my thumb over the apple of her full, freckled cheeks, wiping away the still wet blood. She huffs a quiet laugh, I can tell she was attempting to swallow, and she grabs my wrist and reels me in. Come on, put your back into it. Ma'am! <laughs> I laugh heartily as Piper uses the sleeve of my coat to roughly wipe her face clean, leaving her cheeks a delightful rosy red. My coat! How do I look? My coat! I inspect the damage to my sleeve with a sigh as I register the bloody stains. It's certainly not the worst mess I've been in. Positively ravishing as always. Us. Yeah, that's me. I clear my throat, enchanted by the way her eyes crinkle at the corners when she laughs. I mean it, Piper. Even covered in blood. I would say especially covered in blood. I know you mean it. Sarah, that's a very odd kink. Anyway, we'd better get going. Don't accuse me of anything. <laughs> August will be having a shit fit, I'm sure. 
Yeah, August is like, I thought you chose my route, excuse me. Piper tilts her head to the side, a loud crack as her bones click back into their rightful place. I've never quite heard it described like that, and I don't like it. Let's dash. Let's dash. We're dashing. Dashing. Through dashing. Through the snow, in a one-horse open sleigh. One open sleigh. Oh, the fields we go, the and go. nothing go the way. Ha ha ha. <laughs> it, is, it is literally, like, snowing in the game, though, so I think... I see it. It's easy to tell what we're dealing with as we draw nearer to the scene. Dozens of hunters and enforcers of varying ranks saturate the small clearing, the majority of them still dressed in their festival attire, much alike Piper and I. We spot a retrieval team emerging from the tree line, their faces pale and drawn. It's then that I know. Shit. Heck. They didn't make it. Shit. Heck. Hey, bud. You're here. I am here. They look relieved to see me, for the way we had to part on the beach was less than sac satisfactory. Especially after we almost held hands. <laughs> yeah, like everyone else was an almost kiss and August and we almost, almost, almost held a hand. Your hand. <laughs> Listen, we're taking it slow. It's not... It's okay. Whatever that was that transpired between us. I try not to think about it. It's not the place or time, but the fond way that they gaze at me tells me they long to reach out and touch me. Ah! To make sure I'm real, here, alive. I am all of those things. I feel it too. We ran into some trouble on the way, but we took care of it. I gathered that's why you were so late. It's fine. Obviously, such things cannot be prevented. We... okay. It's not good news, as I'm sure you can tell. Yeah. My heart sinks. I knew, but hearing it out loud is still unpleasant. Do we have an identity? God. They shake their head, brushing the front of their fur coat that I'm sure they're less than happy about wearing in such a situation. Yeah, I'd be mad too, look at that thing. We cannot identify the... Body. Their voice catches. Oh gosh. Oh yeah, there I forgot about that. There is no body again. Nothing but... Well, I don't need to repeat such monstrous details. You've read the reports from the previous murders. I have. It's been a minute. But I have, and they were, I'm sure they were bad. <laughs> it's much of the same ghastliness. Piper scoffs, her shoulders tensing, and I swear I can see tears in her eyes. She's hurting, angry. So angry that I can feel it. Goose flesh prickles across my skin thanks to our close proximity, and my own emotions waver with the sheer force of it. This is fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it is. This cannot keep happening, August. No, it can't. I flinch, feeling the surge of energy as August reacts, the smell of ozone thick in the air. Ooh. A flash in the darkness, and violent sparks crackle about their clenched fist, their eyes alight. Thank you, Piper, for your input. I didn't know this was upsetting. I assumed everyone was enjoying this. Okay, August, thank you so much for that. A dozen eyes turn to look at them, and they quickly calm themselves. Yeah, act professional. They look beyond exhausted, the skin beneath their eyes purple and drawn. Piper opens her mouth to retaliate, but wisely decides against it. This actually might be the first time I've seen her look guilty. August diverts their gaze as if they can't bear to look at her. They're upset too. I suggest you keep your thoughts to yourself in such a situation unless you have any useful insight. It's not a question. Yes. Sorry, General. I thought as much. We're all hurting, Piper, not just you. Ooh, emotions. August sighs deeply, sparing us both a woeful glance before they address the gathered forces. Hunters, any mages present will patrol the immediate area. Generals will head farther afield and begin an extensive perimeter search. I want no stone unturned here. Yes. Any juniors need to get the hell out of here. You're not equipped to even think about dealing with whatever this thing is, and I won't be responsible for your demise. Bye, juniors. Anyone else present is to report back to headquarters immediately. I else. We'll need people on the ground in town to reassure the townsfolk. I don't want this causing widespread panic. It's damage control time. Damage control. There's a quiet, the subdued mumble. Harry? I don't know. I was just thinking that. There's a quiet, subdued mumble of yes, General, and they all dutifully begin to obey August's orders, disappearing in various directions. Would you like me to join the perimeter search? 
You know I'd like you to go home. Leave this to the others. We need you ready for anything that may transpire overnight. You know what? That's not my job. I want to stay here and do cool stuff. You're like, I slept all day. Let me do things. I slept all day. I'm like full of energy. I'm bursting with it. Come on. Perimeter. Perimeter. Of course. Damn it. <laughs> Piper fidgets uneasy. Well, you're a major, aren't you? If you were listening, you'd know what I asked of you. I already forgot what they asked of majors. The tension between them is yet again immensely unpleasant. Of course, General. She should have expected such a response, and I wonder if she'll ever learn. Or maybe she's hoping to rifle them. I can no longer tell. Piper throws me a quick, pitiful glance before she glares at August and turns to join her comrades. Later. Later. August massages their temple, inhaling sharply, swaying where they stand. I notice that their hands are shaking, and I unconsciously take a step towards them, fearful that they may pass out. They hold out their hand, a signal for me to stop. Yep, not the time or the place. I'm fine, really. You're blessing! General. I appreciate your concern, Hunter Robin, really. Anything that ails me is my fault and mine alone. No, that's not how life works. Unless you're just drunk, in which case... Okay. Now, please head back. I meant it when I said I needed you rested. You don't I'm understand. Rest what? I'm rested. <sighs> You'll be the first to hear if anything significant happens. I'll send a messenger to retrieve you when the victim has been identified. Just do a head count and whoever's missing was the victim. Of course. Good night. <laughs> Stay safe. If you think I'm staying out here in this another second, you're sorely mistaken. I have a mountain of paperwork the size of the eye back on my desk. <laughs> like I said, I'm getting the fuck out of here. I got my boots on. Farewell, Sarah. Bye. They're running out here, no path, in heeled boots. Thigh in very, high, very heeled boots. In very <laughs> heeled boots, in that fur coat. Like, they probably got they... dirt on it, and it's going to need to be dry cleaned forever, whatever fantasy dry cleaning looks I like. Know. I take a final look at the scene where the Enforcer witches have cast no, their mage lights. Like do you think there's like a fantasy dry cleaners in this town? A fantasy dry cleaners? I mean, probably. Hey, I don't Chris, think. How does, hey, Chris. How does August dry clean their coat? <laughs> this is a very vital question that I really need Magic. the answer to. I take a final look at the scene where the Enforcer witches have cast their mage lights over a bloodied patch of grass, leaving them to their work no matter how much I long to investigate. I mean, August left. If I wanted to stay, it's not like they would know. Hunter, just do your thing where you go over and you like touch the patch of grass and then you and are able you to hear, like, ghosts. hear the yeah. ghosts. Yeah. After that outburst, it's best not to question my enforcer's request. No, it is- you- <sighs> I bow my head before I turn, eager to get out of here. As I head back through the woodland, I notice how eerily silent it is. A strange sense of calm washes over me, then- ooh! A whisper- ooh! <gasps> I stop dead in my tracks, my hand hovering over my weapon. See nothing, feel nothing, no matter how hard I concentrate. Then I realize that voice, the familiar yet subdued ache that begins to creep into my temple. James? Should you do a creepy voice or shall I? You deserve to know. Oh. The pain ebbs and flows, my breathing growing unsteady, almost as if something weighs heavy upon my chest. The fleeting, comforting calm that had just settled over me is snatched away as his voice continues to echo in my mind. Know what? I'm sorry. Oh, 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 oh! A sharp, burning pain shoots up along my spine, and I fall to the ground, the snow-covered grass wet beneath my fingertips. And if you see- His words were- Hmm? Even, and if you see his reflection in the snow-covered hills- yep, Shut up! <laughs> will the landslide bring you down? His words were cut off, and after a moment, I'm yet again surrounded by a blissful silence. Fucking ghosts. I drag myself to my feet, and now I only have one thing on my mind. One thing that I must do. Go home and sleep. No, I'm just kidding. Visit the Lieutenant General and find out what the hell is happening to me. After no luck finding him in his own office, I head to the only other place I assume he may be at this hour. The door to Arg August off... <laughs> The door to August's office is thankfully ajar, so I peek around the frame, finding Harry standing alone. Oh! 
He has a report in hand, his coat hanging on the back of August's chair. He looks exhausted, his eyes red-rimmed. However, when he notices me, he still offers me a bright, earnest smile. Oh my god, what's his voice? Uh... Firework time! I remember that, but I can't remember how I did it. Okay. It was like, yeah, it was like a important Sarah, man's voice. I can't tell yeah. you how relieved I am to see you safe. My throat feels tight, my palms sweaty, and I can't quite place why. James is doing a good job of making it difficult for me to stop thinking about him. The pain I felt from his final moment was raw, like an exploded nerve. For some reason, when I think of it, I now think of Harry. I need to know why he wanted me to come here, why everything seems to point back to the man standing before me. I need to tell you something, but I need you to promise that you won't think I've lost my mind when I tell you. Harry narrows his gaze, nodding once. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Go on. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I visited the graveyard a few days ago while I was getting my bearings. He stays silent, but I can't help but notice the way his knuckles bleed white as he tightens his fist. I felt an overwhelming sense of grief there. Pain, a yearning for a lost love, a sense of failure and creepling, creep, creepling and crippling sorrow. Creepling. I thought nothing of it at the time. Creepling. I thought nothing of it at the time. It's not unheard of for those that have been murdered to feel scared or sentimental in their final moments, in my experience. But Harry drops his gaze, his bright eyes sad, edged with tears. My words threaten to catch in my throat. But I relent. The other night I visited again, almost like so Help, help. Okay. The other night I visited again, almost like something was pulling me there. I heard more, not just a memory this time, he spoke to me. He looks like he's seen a ghost staring at me wide eyed. He quickly swipes at his cheeks. Don't cry. Oh James. Oh, James. I get the horrible feeling that he's been waiting for this. Oh, no. I need to know. He nods, understanding. Then he takes a deep, shuddering breath. James was assigned as my very first hunter the moment we both graduated at 18. He'd shown remarkable promise in school, basically skipping all of the junior nonsense that they force upon you. Cool. I, too, had impressed, so we were pl placed together in the hopes that we'd become unstoppable. Oh, no. We were inseparable in the field together for decades, until I took this post as lieutenant general. Mm. A pause. Another deep breath. One that shakes. But, as well as being my subordinate, he was also my partner. No, oh, no! My husband. No! No, 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 no! No, 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 no! I'm so upset! I was so upset! My heart sinks, bile rising in my throat. I've read countless reports about him in the infamous Hunter Lane over the years, but I never knew his first name or anything about him other than his incom incomparable work. Official records tend to omit personal details for the safety of the hunter and forcer in question, unless they become a leader like Harry. They were inim inimitable. Inimitable. <laughs> The best of the best. Together they killed some of the most nefarious creatures in our history, and without question, every young trainee aspires to be just like Hunter Lane. To think that he's just... gone. And what Harry must be going through. I'm so sorry, I had no idea you were married to Hunter Lane. For nearly ten years, yes. But we'd known each other forever. I failed the hunter initiation quite dramatically, and he was taken away to his father's home country to train, and become what I'd always dreamed of becoming. Life had other plans for me, but we still found each other in the end. He used to joke that we were destined, the romantic fool. Oh, no! I... really don't think it's sunk in that he's gone quite yet. No! I keep thinking he's going to walk through my door, covered head to toe in blood and grime with a stupid, oh. wonderful grin on his face. Oh no, stop! I'm so sad! He laughs to himself, a quiet huff, and I notice how his eyes sparkle when he talks about him. Man! Fuck this game! 
They say that people deal with grief differently, but I qu haven't quite figured mine out just yet. <sighs> I apologize for not telling you, but it was important to me that I could trust you first. My judgment has been impaired, I'll admit it. Though this turn of events isn't exactly what I expected. All I can think about now is justice. About the others that died before him and what we could have done to stop it. Yeah! What I could have done to stop it. Yeah. What did he tell you when he... spoke to you? I, I don't remember. It was a while ago. I mean, just now he said Harry. <laughs> his words waver and he mindlessly fiddles with his wedding band, eagerly awaiting my response. I think about what Ezra said, about being careful who I share this with. Did that warning apply to the Lugener Lieutenant General of all of Escria? And the husband of the guy who's dead? I'm telling him the whole truth and nothing but the truth. He told me to leave, that he failed, and that there's no hope. He swallows thickly, his expression unchanging. I got the impression he wanted to say more, but I don't know how he managed to communicate with me in the first place. I think he can only say so much before he fades away. It feels like a great struggle for him to reach out. I cannot explain it. He closes his eyes tight, shaking his head as if he can't bear to hear anymore. I'm sorry. I will need you to speak to Augustus about this. They know about more about psionic magic than anyone here. I'm sure they'll be able to help you figure this out. I do not trust anyone else. I am so sad. I am... Then a hopeful look. Did, did he truly not say anything else? He did, he said your name, I promise you he did, could, please. He didn't know, but the first night that I felt him, I could tell how much he loved you, Harry. You were all he could think about in his final moments. Aww. He laughs quietly. Yes. Well, he's all I can think about, too. A curse now, I suppose. Since there's no body, can't we just... Can't we just say everybody got kind of zapped into another dimension or something, and they're all chill? It's fine. You're just in a long-distance relationship now. It's fine. <laughs> a long-distance relationship with someone you can't talk to. That's just how A long-distance... A long-distance... No? A long-distance relationship... A long-distance relationship where um, the person please, you're dating... the title of this episode please be a dong-listance. A, a long-distance relationship where the person you're dating only has my phone number and can only send me, like, a tweet length at a time. <laughs> That's what's happening tweet here. Length back when it was the 140 Yeah, characters. back when it was little. Silence hangs heavy between us, and I don't quite know what to say next. Looks devastated, understandably. He must have so much on his mind already with the latest murder, and now this. The way he came alive when he spoke about James didn't go unnoticed, and I wonder if maybe talking about him would lift his mood. Or do the opposite. I don't know how grief works. There's a lot of hunters out there that can only aspire to be half as brilliant as Hunter Lane. I would love to hear what he was like, if you don't mind. Sure enough, his somber expression disappears, and he seems to brighten up a little. Aww. He was a cocky son of a bitch, but it worked well for him <laughs> in the field. <laughs> he was never careless, though. I often found myself watching him instead of paying attention to whatever was attacking us. Luckily, he could fight well enough to protect us both, or I'm sure we'd have been in trouble. Aww. A lot of enforcers choose to stay cooped up in a stuffy office away from all that danger. Working with James made me not want to miss a thing. He digs into his coat pocket, retrieving his wallet and putting out, pulling out a small weathered photo. He pauses, staring me down as if he had reservations. But then he hands it over. Please tell me I can see it. Please tell me I can see it. Yes. Oh! Oh! I'm so upset, Robin. I, I'm so upset. 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 It's of him and James. They look young, beyond happy, and impossibly in love. Oh, I'm so upset. We were unbearable to be around, I'm sure. I'm so upset. I'm so upset. I study the genuine smiles, the way their fingers are laced together. Oh, I may not know James aside from the voice in my head, but I feel a strange connection to him. As if I too have known him forever. Oh, I miss him and I don't even know him. Thank you for showing me. 
He tucks the photo back into its place right beside a neatly folded up letter. Well, apparently he appears to have taken a liking to you. It's only fair for you to put a face to the name, I suppose. Oh, I'm so sad. He stares down at his hand, once again twisting his, his wedding band. His expression is neutral when he meets my gaze, but in a split second his disposition shifts to the stiff formality I'm so used to when dealing with figures of authority. I gather that our conversation about his dearly departed is over. Oh. What happened tonight could have been prevented. It's unacceptable that we were still aware of the looming threat, and yet we let our guard down and lost another life. Was it at his insistence that we do the festival? Pretty sure. This cannot yeah. happen again. Sir? I nod, agreeing wholeheartedly, but I cannot shake the feeling that, yes, this could have <laughs> been prevented if we weren't for the festival. I messed that sentence up, but you know what I was saying. The festival he was so adamant went ahead, despite others' clear apprehension, including August. I like that the game was like, hey, if you didn't put it together, we're just going to go ahead and tell you, like, that was sus. I think better of pressing the matter, for Harry suddenly doesn't seem like a man willing to admit fault. Did you speak to the twins as I requested? Yep, I did, and I'm sh as, as I'm sure you expected, I didn't get much out of them. A quiet hum, which I think is an indifferent agreement, and Harry sighs heavily. They are rather adept at both lying and sheer avoidance. Yeah, I'm interested in speaking to the brother alone, though. There was something off about him, like he didn't want to be there. I also came across a letter outside the building, one that was addressed to him. The language looked demonic. Harry nods, indifferent, and I wonder if he even heard me. He clears his throat and flicks his eyes to the side as though he has no interest in humoring me any longer. Well, I mean, I'll leave then. There's nothing more that you can do here until we identify the victim. Go get some rest. It's late. What do you want to do so bad that I can't be here for? What secrets do you have? You are dismissed, Hunter Robin. You never summoned me in the first place. Though I'm used to being addressed in such a manner, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't perplexed by the shift in his demeanor. I chalked it down to grief, just like he said, but I can't help but feel like maybe I've disappointed him somehow. I was supposed to be the one to die. Yep, didn't work out. I turn and I quietly leave. Bye. I can't believe he tried to kill you. I can't believe he tried to kill me. That was like really fucking rude.